Welcome to Windows 8. What you're looking at now is the start screen which has replaced the start menu. There is a start button on your keyboard that you access the start screen from. You can also move your mouse to the extreme left hand corner in order to facilitate what is very similar to a start button. You can also right click in the extreme lower left hand corner to get a very robust shortcut list of items that you can perform including a link again to the desktop. What you see in this area are called Metro apps. Think of a Metro app as a small application that can run either on a computer or on a smartphone. The store up here is where you can download free or purchase Metro apps that you would like to install on your system. Many of these apps can be resized. So if you right click on an app, you can choose to make it smaller. Again, you can right click to make it larger. Or if you don't care for it, you can unpin it from the start screen if you like, or uninstall the Metro app. You'll notice that I've added quite a few items myself. I've added a shortcut to our desire to learn learning management system. I've configured my email system. I've also added shortcuts to WordPad, Paint, Calculator, My Computer, the Command Prompt, the Control Panel, these were already installed, I just made shortcuts to those, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. I also have quite a few management tools turned on, and I'll show you how you can turn on and off the management tools. And any new software you add also gets an icon which you can move around your start screen. One of the key things here to realize is while there's also no start button on the screen, the start button typically led to accessories, but it also had the shut down menu. If you move your mouse to the lower right hand corner, you get these little charms that appear. Under settings, you have a settings menu, which allows you to turn on or off the administrative tools, but more importantly down at the bottom this is where your power switch is going to be located. There is a keyboard shortcut for this. If you press the start plus I key on your keyboard you can get to this screen directly. If you choose more PC settings you'll find something that looks very similar to the old control panel. This is also where you can control which of those Metro apps are running and what kind of updates they're using. I'm just pressing the Start key again to get back to the Start. But most of what you're probably going to be interested in is using the web browser. This is Internet Explorer 10. If you launch Internet Explorer 10 from the Start, you get a very large full screen Metro style interface. If you don't care for this interface, you can choose the button down here that looks like a wrench and then view it on the desktop interface. Another feature is search. It used to be you had to click on the start menu to access search. Now all you have to do is start typing something. For example, I'll just start typing notepad in OTE and it's already found a couple of items that would meet my criteria. I could open the program or I could right click on the program and choose to pin that to the start making it easier to access or I could pin it to the taskbar or I could simply open it in a new window. Pressing the start button again I will now move into the desktop. You'll notice that I have added some shortcuts to my desktop. Again, I like having quick access to some things, even though I could use the search feature from the start screen. 
I like having access to my computer. I like having access to the control panel. If you would like to add these items to your desktop, you right-click the desktop and choose Personalize. In the upper left-hand corner, you can change the desktop icons, and you can add the network icon, user file icon. Again, I've selected the computer icon, left the recycle bin in place, and added the control panel. After adding the computer icon to the desktop, when you open the computer icon, you get a new ribboned interface at the top of the screen. Notice we have pop-up tabs also. From here we can get properties, easily open or rename, and there's a lot of tools specifically for specific types of drives. If you choose a hard drive, the tools change again. And we have again several different views of what we can do. On the file tab, very nicely, is the command prompt. We also have under the view tab the ability to turn on and off file extensions as well as change icon views. We also have some new drive tools so if you have removable media you can easily format, clean up, or optimize that media. Aside from the basic Microsoft ribbon options of copy, paste, we also have one very nice new item, which is a quick access bar. If you click on the arrow, arrows meaning more options, you can actually go in and customize to an extent that quick access toolbar, just as you would in Microsoft Word or Excel. You can also add gadgets gadgets like the clock and weather. Right click and choose gadgets to select which gadgets you would like to add to your computer. But there were some other things that I really wanted to be able to use without having to go back to the start screen to access them. For some of these items you can click on computer, go to the hard drive, choose program files, and let's say that I'd like to add a link to Adobe on my desktop. I just find the actual executable, then I could right click on that and choose send to desktop to create a shortcut. So if you use the my computer feature, you can locate the programs that you wish to use and add them to the desktop. Many times when you install software, it'll also offer to add an icon to the desktop. And even though it says add it to the start menu, it'll add it to the start screen. You'll notice I've got several windows running right now. I've even left myself a note on how to shut down. In previous versions of Windows, if you pressed Alt-Tab, you could get thumbnails of the windows you wish to come off on when you let go of those keys. Windows 7 had Start Tab, which gave you a Rolodex view. Now these days, Start Tab brings up a sidebar that allows you to choose from running applications or the Start screen. Some of these Metro apps seem to persist since there is no exit screen. If you press Control, Alt, and Delete, you can go to the task manager and then choose which applications you no longer want running if there is no close item. So I'll select Internet Explorer and choose to end the task so I don't need that program running in the background. And now that I'm finished with the task manager, I can simply close the task manager. I hope this was a help. There's a lot of interesting features in Windows 8. It'll be a little confusing at first, but as long as you remember to click the Start button on your keyboard, and as long as you remember Extreme Right to access Settings, Devices, Search, and again, under Settings will be the Shutdown Options.